So now I'm ready to get started with modeling. So as I mentioned before, we're going to use this example here, this Walt Disney Concert Hall, some of the form as inspiration for the form we're going to create. I'm going to try to mimic uh, a similar uh, exterior cladding system to what we have going on here. And we're going to focus on those two towers that you kind of see in the middle there. Um, we're trying to get away from that boxy look, so we'll kind of mimic the uh, twists and the curves on there. Uh, and then we'll also try to get that uh, facade placed on the outside. So with that in mind, I'm ready to go ahead and jump to Revit, and we're going to jump into the conceptual massing environment. So from our window here, let's go ahead and jump to the conceptual massing. Over underneath our families area here, I'm just going to click on New Conceptual Mass. And in the folder, we'll go Mass, and we'll go ahead and Open. Now, for this course, I'm not going to go into every detail on every little nuance or every move that I'm doing here. I'm going to assume you are pretty familiar with working in the conceptual massing environment. But I will definitely move at a pace that will make it easy for you to follow if that's your style of learning and you really want to go along and kind of follow me as I go. So I'll make sure not to leave you behind. So with that in mind, the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and get some key measurements in place and also some levels. So right now we're just at level 1 here. And I want to add, oh, about four more levels. Now the distances I have in mind for mine are 20 feet, 60 feet, 70 feet, and 80. And those are all distances from the ground floor. So I need those to be my elevation points. So to do that really quick, let's just make sure we're in our Create tab. And I'm going to go ahead and go to Level here. And I want to use the Offset Pick Line with a distance of 20 feet for my first one. So we'll go ahead and do it right here. And boom, that takes care of our Level 2. And we see the 20 feet here, and I know we're in business. So now I want my next one to be at 60 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and come back here. I'm going to type in 60. Still doing my pick line, but I'm going to do my pick line from the ground floor so that I can hit this up to 60 feet. Now I want to go to the 70 foot elevation, so I'm going to do an offset again, really making sure I stay in this command and keeping it active. And again, I'm going to do this from the ground floor because 70 is going to be my elevation point. And then last but not least, we'll do the highest point here, which will be 80 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and change that 8 or that 7 to an 8, and again from the bottom. We'll kick that up as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get the stage set up really quickly. So now, as far as orientation is concerned here, uh, I'm more concerned about making sure we have a plane that we can actually mirror some geometry across. So as far as what's the front and what's the back, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to keep it simple, and I'm not going to switch things up. So whatever's front on a view cube, I'm going to assume is going to be the front in our model. But I'm just going to kind of draw in this area, or this quadrant, if you will using this line here as my reflection line as I draw simple 2D line work to shoot it across. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So I want to go ahead and set my level 1 as my working plane. So I'm going to go ahead and do set my work plane, level 1. I'm going to go ahead and grab a model line here in the draw panel. And we'll kind of work out of this quadrant. So I'm going to go right off of this line here. So I'm going to assume that from here, going in this direction, I want, oh, 60 feet. So I'm going to say 60. I want to come back out this way, 90 degrees, going 40 feet. So we'll say 40. Now I'm going to hit Escape one time, and it's still activating my line command here. I'm going to come to this end, and I'm just going to draw another 40-foot line. I'll hit Escape one more time, not clearing the command, just a one-time escape. Now I want to place an arc inside this area here, closing off this area, so we have more of a closed-loop system so that we can create a nice form. Now, again, this is all conceptual. I don't know the exact degree or measurement of this radius that needs to come in here, but I'm definitely going to eyeball this and try to get this the best I can. So we'll assume something like this. So now I can grab this as a whole, and if you happen to grab it and only one portion of it is highlighted, just give it a couple of tabs, and when you see the entire thing highlighted, just select it. That means you can grab the entire thing as one object. So I'm going to go ahead and move. And I want this to be pretty close to the center line here. I'll put it about right there. So now what we can do is we can grab this. I'm going to go ahead and go to Mirror. And I'm going to do the mirror by picking my axis. I'm going to go ahead and shoot it across this area. Now while this one's highlighted, I'm going to go ahead and hit Create Form. And I'm going to go ahead and change the height distance. I can either do so by grabbing and just pulling here, or I'm going to type in the value. Now if you grabbed and pulled here, we can stop right at that 20 foot. 
but luckily it did automatically. So we have our 20 foot distances in place. But my entire form, I actually want to go up to the 60 foot. So I'm going to change that 20 to a 60 and boom. Do the same thing here. Create form. We'll see that distance here. Create that, change that 20 foot to a 60 foot. And again, that's the units I'm working in are feet and inches pretty much. You may be working in different units, but uh, that's kind of what I'm working in. And the principle is exactly the same. So now what I want to do, I want to get that look that we have from that concert hall, and I want to skew things off a little bit. So let's go ahead and mess with this a little bit. So I'm going to grab some corners. And the first thing I want to do is I want to maybe bring this corner up, up to the 20 foot mark. Now if you hover over there and you hit tab a few times, once you hit that circle or that dot, that lets you know that you've highlighted the corner and you can actually move this up. Now I'm going to snap this to where it hits the 20 mark, 20 foot mark that we set for level 2. Now you can see kind of why we did that. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Perfect. So now I want to go ahead and mess with my roof line here. So I'm going to grab this corner and I'm going to bring this one up all the way up to the 80. So we'll snap it up to my highest level. Now this level, I'm going to bring it up to the 70 foot elevation. So again, I'm just going to bring it up and snap till I notice it snaps to my elevation. Now if I want to change things up just a bit, I can. I'm going to grab some of these edges. I'm going to flare out these edges just a little bit. Do the same thing with this one. And I'm just selecting the edge and I'm pulling. Give it a nice little flared look. So there we go. We have something that's not exactly, but it's, you know, definitely uh, mimics what's going on with uh, the inspirational uh, image we had. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and kind of leave things here. And in the next lesson, I want to show you how we can actually take these surfaces and divide the surfaces. And in that clip, I want to show you how we can mess with the spacing to kind of make sure we're fitting things to the panel sizes we have in mind. So I'll meet you in the next clip where we'll actually begin working with dividing the surface.